Right. Joining me right now live with their takes on what went down in Fort Hood, two colleagues, Tucker Carlson's in D.C. and Fox Business host John Stossel here with me in New York. Uh, welcome. Uh, first time. So, Tucker, what's your take? Uh, is Lieberman right? Is this uh, Muslim terrorism? Well, we, we don't know. I mean, there, there are indications that this guy was a devout Muslim, maybe a Muslim extremist. I, I, don't, I don't think we could answer that with any certainty. I am amazed, though, by the instinct of the press, which from the very first minutes of the story was to downplay his Muslim affiliations and to come to jump to conclusions about what motivated him, that he was somehow a victim of PTSD, though he'd never been in combat, so he must have caught it from soldiers he was debriefing upon their return from Iraq. I mean, all these explanations were sort of forced on newspaper readers and television viewers to divert attention away from what may be an obvious explanation. He's a religious kook. We've seen this before. He Again, may, we don't know. Be, but know, why is the press so anxious to tell us that he's not motivated by religion? Well, I don't know what motivates him, uh, John Stossel, but to suggest that he's a terrorist, doesn't that of necessity require that he, that he conspires with someone, that he has some communication? As far as I know, his computer shows no links with anybody. This is a guy, he's a sociopath, he's a criminal. He could have uh, had a toothache and gone off because of that. Well, all that's true. I, I'm not going to speculate on what I haven't reported on. What about the Department of Homeland Security? I believe, and here's why I have a beef with uh, this whole Muslim terrorism business. I think that the Department of Homeland Security, you're Mr. Waste, Fraud, and Abuse, will come to be regarded in history as one of the great wastes of taxpayer money. And I think that whenever there is an angle that can possibly be exploited that fits their mandate, their post-9-11 mandate, they seize it, they run with it, and I think more than what Tucker suggests, that obscures the truth. I totally agree. All government agencies do that, and the Department of Homeland Security can sell fear. But when you look at the numbers of how many of us are threatened by terrorism versus an ordinary house fire, house fires kill far more people. And the flu and everything else. Okay, you guys stand by. Panelists, think about the substance of what was passed last night. Tucker Carlson, John Stossel. John, starting with you, it's got a public option. It's got a public option, and that sounds good to people. It Another sounds good choice to me. from government sounds good to you, I know. And you know, in theory, it could be good, but can we put the picture of the car up? A car. To me, Does John have a car this, picture that we want to see? This is the public option. If I, we I, can we, get yeah, that yeah, car yeah, up yeah, there. We have a picture of a car. Hey, there we there go. There it is. Oh, it's from <laughs> That this, clunker from East Germany. <laughs> but these were the East German engineers. These were no slouches. This, was, this is the best a planned economy could produce. It was so bad, you had to put the oil and gas in separately. I mean, the oil... In oil and gas in separately and shake the car to mix them together. <laughs> and this was the pride of the Eastern Bloc. And yet when the Berlin Wall went down, it disappeared because it couldn't compete with our free market system. So you're suggesting that anything the government does, it does badly. Will become like that. That's and like in the that. case of the public option, in addition, government cheats because they can borrow money more cheaply. And also when the congressman's mother is turned down for something, you don't think they're going to break the it'll break even rule and say, oh, we'll just borrow from the taxpayers this time. And that'll drive the private alternatives away. And yet, Tucker, 96 percent of Americans will be covered as compared to 82 percent now. Right. We're also going to spend a trillion dollars at a time when we're broke. We're going to at a time when we have about 15 percent, practically speaking, unemployment, add more regulation. Here's the real problem, though. This is, a, this is crossing a line. As soon as you accept that your health is my business economically, then there's nothing you can't tell me to do in my private life. This bill has provisions that would stick your nose into what I eat for dinner. They would try to control oh, my it, diet. It doesn't literally. have anything about that. Well, it, it. It, it certainly does. And the, and the people who wrote it will tell you, point blank, we want labeling in restaurants, fat food, fast food restaurants, and vending machines, so that people will eat differently than they eat now because their weight affects my pocketbook. There's well, really let nothing. Let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. As a conservative, would you agree that the Republicans are in the pocket of the insurance company because they refuse to uh, get rid of the antitrust exemptions that the insurance companies have that prevent real comp competition. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, so, I'm so far out of that world. I mean, I, I'm not sure I even believe in antitrust law in the first place. And all of that is beside the point. Again, 
this legislation makes almost nothing off limits. Why, why couldn't, under the, the, under the ideas that this is go, about to codify in law, why couldn't you tell me who I could sleep with? Because those, those choices certainly affect my health and Tucker, therefore your pocketbook. I guarantee you I won't do that. But do you think it's or, really no, that I dangerous, know you are wrong. No, but I'm, I'm asking a really serious uh, question. Uh, well, uh, it's theoretically possible that what he says could come true. Once they're paying for it, they can tell you how to behave. I'm more worried about how much they're spending. It is a problem. The deficit is enormous, admittedly. Uh, John, I hope you make this a regular stop on your, uh, your weekend tour. We look forward to your own program. Tucker, you too. Thank you very much.